G'day viewers, Jason, June Lap Electrical Services. I am up in Lanceland today, just north of Perth. Um, actually, just out of Lanceland, it's in a suburb called Carrickon, I think it is. That's, I think that's where I am. Um, we've got this job here. This is not one of my installations. Uh, I was asked to help out with this one. We've got a, a Q Cells Q Home battery energy storage system, uh, which is located at the shed down there back at the house and it had stopped working and what we've got here is this energy meter um, and because of the distance between the shed and the meter box the energy meter needs to be up here because we've got loads here and we've also got loads at the house but the battery system is on the shed which is the end of the line down there now, in order for the battery system to know what's going on in the house, as far as where energy is going and how much solar is being produced, how much energy is being exported, how much energy is being imported, we need the energy meter. So essentially, the inverter makes its decisions as to whether to charge batteries, discharge batteries, um, according to what this energy meter is telling it. Now, Ideally, we would have an Ethernet cable going from straight from the energy meter underground to the shed. So the sh you can just see the solar panels in the background there on the shed. And you can just see the ladder going up onto the shed there. And then to the side of that is an antenna, similar to this one here. Um, and what we've got is a wireless bridge because we couldn't get an Ethernet cable underground or the original installers couldn't. Um, and so what had happened is I got called here because the system wasn't working, it was just idle. And I wasn't sure if it was the energy meter that had failed or if it was this device, which is a wireless bridge. So what this does is it takes our RS485 signal from the energy meter and converts it into um, a wireless signal back to the shed there, which I'll take you down to in a minute. And then there's another antenna on the shed and then a receiver of, uh, of the same as this. So you've got the transmission and the receiver. That, they both do the same thing, basically. It's, it's called a wireless bridge. Um, I generally won't use these products um, because they're typically unreliable and that's exactly what's happened here. So the system's only two to three years old, I believe, and it stopped working. And that would probably be because of the trees growing. As you can see, um, through the fault finding process, we trimmed the trees here a little bit. Well, I didn't, the owner did. Um, and, uh, and those ones over there a little bit also, just in the distance there. Because the antennas do need to be for this particular product they need to be within eight meters horizontally of each other and they also need to be perpendicular one can't be like that and the other one like that because the signal's not going to reach but the the antenna as it turns out on the shed down the other side was just a standard antenna it wasn't strong enough um, so i rang integralec and got some um, support from them and ultimately what I did is I just ran an external cable um, from here uh, all the way back to the shed just to determine what was actually faulty because I didn't know if it was the energy meter or, an, or the wireless bridge. And both of them are relatively expensive devices and I'm about an hour away from site here. So two hour round trip. So it does get expensive if I'm backwards and forwards um, with things and not working out what it is. So on my second visit, I came back I bypassed the wireless bridge with this hard wiring and for the last, oh, what have I been gone, two weeks I think, the system has been working flawlessly. So I spoke to Integralec, sent them some photos of the antennas and they suggested we needed a, a bigger antenna on the shed down there. So I've just done that and as you can see by the LEDs on the device here, it's communicating really well now, whereas before it was just an intermittent um, transmission and that's what the LEDs are representing transmission and receiving 
and they would only work intermittently and the energy meter would appear on the screen of the inverter intermittently. Um, now this particular setup here, that's definitely not ideal. That should be located somewhere away from where it can contact any um, live parts, such as on this contactor. And in fact, that contactor is not ideal either. Um, that should have been DIN rail mounted um, in a better location than that. But yeah, it is what it is. Again, it's not my install. I'm just making the bloody thing work. Um, so I've just installed the antenna and yeah, we're away now, it's working good. Um, so um, yeah, that was a, a good conclusion and um, finally got the result. I'll take you down the shed and show you what we got down there. So uh, just quickly before I go back down the shed, I've just noticed here, which I didn't notice before, the receiving and transmitting icon is lighting up there. And this LED is now flashing, which it was not doing before. I'm not actually familiar with this meter, so I was, I was a little bit unsure as to tell whether it's working or not also. But that was not flashing, and that LED was definitely not flashing. Um, so that tells me it should be flashing if it is indeed uh, communicating with the inverter. So um, we'll just go for a walk down to the shed now. So that's the antenna we had on it or that was previously installed. Uh, it's relatively small. Now we've got that much bigger high gain antenna up there, which appears to be doing the job. I guess that's about 80 meters between both antennas. And then in the shed here, and I'm not actually familiar with these products. Uh, so I had to do a bit of research to get my head around it. Q cells were helpful. Um, this is what we've got, Q Home ESS Hybrid G2, um, two batteries, inverter. Now just on this screen here, that little icon there means the inverter is talking to the energy meter. And um, you can see on the screen there, we've got all our directional flow of our energy. And down here, is the other second part of the wireless bridge and again you can see those leds flashing uh, continuously which indicates it's communicating beautifully so that is problem solved now the q cells product used to communicate to the online monitoring portal by the switched in however that is no longer supported which is a real bummer for q cells clients because uh, their systems are no longer online if that's the case um, but I believe you can connect them um, just with a, a wireless 4G modem. Um, that's another solution. All right, so there we go. A little bit of problem solving with a wireless bridge. And again, I recommend not using them where possible. Always hardwire your communication lines if possible.